House Foreign Affairs Committee held a hearing yesterday on the 2021 U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, one of the largest evacuation operations in American history. Back in February 2020, it was the Trump administration who signed the deal with the Taliban that set up the structure for the removal of U.S. forces. They were to be pulled out within 14 months, a timeline that shifted back an additional four months after Trump's successor, President Biden, moved the deadline to August 2021. At yesterday's hearing, former chair of the Joint Chief of Staff, retired General Mark Milley, described what he thought was the main problem behind the withdrawal. On 14 August, the non-combatant evacuation operation decision was made by the Department of State, and the U.S. military alerted, marshaled, mobilized, and rapidly deployed faster than any military in the world could ever do. It is my assessment that that decision came too late. General Miller, do you think mistakes were made uh, in either the planning uh, phases, things that we thought were going to happen that didn't happen, or things on the ground that unfolded? There's zero doubt in my mind there were mistakes made, and that's the point of the after-action reviews. Identify those mistakes and develop solutions to implement them in the future. Um, and, and I think the fundamental mistake, fundamental flaw, uh, was the timing uh, of the State Department uh, call of the NEO. I think that was too slow and too late. Mm. Joining us now is the committee's ranking member, Democratic Congressman Gregory Meeks of New York. And uh, President Biden certainly got a lot of criticism about how this went. It was, um, you know, an incredibly stunning visual uh, when uh, the evacuation and the drawdown uh, played out. I'm curious what the purpose of the hearings are. And in terms of mistakes made, are any of them u useful uh, for future operations? Look, let me tell you, first of all, there was nothing really new yesterday. The generals, and they stated that their testimony yesterday was exactly the same as their testimony uh, when they testified before the Armed Services Committee uh, on the House and on the Senate side when they were in uniform. The only difference is to, that yesterday they were not in uniform and they were in uniform then. And they came, you know, initially at the threat of a subpoena by, uh, by the committee, but they ultimately came in a voluntary basis. The fact of the matter is, what we're supposed to be doing is trying to find a way to look at what, what we did successfully and what we didn't do and what we can improve on. And that, as the general said, it's a 20-year look at what our, our uh, fighting in Afghanistan, and that you could not take two days, three days in a single incident to look at that. He, in fact, he said the foundation of evacuating was really formed uh, with the Doha Agreement, which was a bilateral agreement between the United States and a terrorist organization, basically, led by Pompeo. Uh, you know, it was them, didn't include the Afghan government. Uh, and he also said that the decision that you have to make leading up to what took place, and here's where, you know, judgments, and we want to look at these things, and, but I think we've got to get the facts, you know, completely. So on, and I remember this very clearly, because about a week before the decision to change, uh, President Ghani, then of Afghanistan, was right here at the Capitol. And he said that he and his troops would stand and stay. And what changed things is when they left, because what we was doing was to try to make, you know, and I saw some Republicans even talking about how or why did we leave on August 31st, that that was too early, that we should have stayed longer than that. Well, I think what the generals were saying was that once the once Ghani left, that changed circumstances. And so they thought that leaving before Ghani left would have been uh, uh, beneficial. And that's something that we need to look at, whether, you know, the evidence or, you know, what we looked at before, should we have left before as opposed to after. But the focus of what the Biden administration was looking at, saving more American lives. Because what the, what the generals also said, and they said they're 100% certain if we stayed there, if we did not leave, that we would be back at war and there would have to be a tremendous surge of troops back on the ground, putting more American lives at, at the line. So what Joe Biden did was what he thought, and I agree with him, was in the best interest of the American people, getting out, 
on August 31st, because the deadline had been May 21st, uh, and preventing having to put more troops on the ground and fighting and going back into war with the Taliban. Congressman, we want to turn you to another matter now. It seems like a deal is at hand to avoid a government shutdown, which means the next order of business could be Ukraine aid. Speaker Johnson has suggested that he'll bring some sort of national security bill that would have some aid to Israel and Ukraine. He's working it up. Have you learned more as to what his plan is, the timetable of it, and, and frankly, whether you think this will be effective? We certainly know, of course, that he refused to bring a previous measure passed by the Senate up for a vote. Well, I'm very nervous about this situation because it seems to me our national security have dictated we should have passed this supplemental that we got from the Senate weeks ago because every day matters. Uh, and we're about to go on a two-week break, and we can see every day that things can get worse and worse. The Ukrainians are trying to make a decision of whether or not they should use the ammunition, the small what amount that they have left, or not as opposed to doing the tactical things that they have done for the last two years. You know, it's a Ukrainian victory already, the fact that we're still here, as long as we give them what they need. Um, so I'm hoping, and I wish that we would do, and we should be doing the, the supplemental before we leave Washington. We're going to take the Easter recess, so we won't be back here for two weeks. And I just came back uh, from when I was at the Munich Security Council. I just was in London and in and, and Paris uh, and talking to some of our friends and allies there. They are very, very concerned about uh, what has taken place and how long and whether we would do it. So it is time for us just and he could do it tomorrow. Put the supplemental on the floor uh, that we got from the Senate and we'll get over 300 votes and we can get to move on it right now. Because every day, every minute, every hour counts, and we need to get that to them. Um, so I do believe there's an agreement on the budget, so hopefully we'll get that done. I hope he gets that on the floor before Friday. But so should he get the supplemental on the floor before we leave for the Easter recess. All right. Ranking member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Democratic Congressman Gregory Meeks of New York. Thank you very much for being on this morning. We Thank appreciate you for it. Me.